So one of the algorithms the other day served me a video from an Indian restaurant in the UK. They were demonstrating some gorgeous dish that they make, and I swear, every other comment on this video was somebody sarcastically saying, ooh, microplastics, delicious, all because they were preparing their food on plastic cutting boards. Like nearly every other restaurant or commercial food preparation place in the developed world, they were using poly cutting boards. This is an incredibly stupid comment for people to be leaving, and it's mean, and we're gonna talk about why. Microplastics from plastic cutting boards, that's real, it's documented, it's a thing. What we do not know is how much microplastics you're getting from your plastic cutting boards compared to the volume of microplastics that you're getting from other vectors, other sources in your environment. The environment is full of microplastics. It's ubiquitous in our world and in our bodies at this point. We also do not know how big of a deal that is. We don't really know what it's doing to us. And at this point, my estimation of the research that I'm gonna share with you is basically we don't know enough to be freaked out at this point. Of course, there are many reasons why commercial food preparers generally use plastic cutting boards rather than wood. Um, in many jurisdictions, they may be literally required to, or they might be all but required to. It's called HACCP, Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points. This is the safety protocol that has been enshrined into the regulatory codes covering restaurants in all kinds of developed countries. And what it says is that you have to use color-coded cutting boards, a red one for meat and, and what is it, green one for vegetables, white one for fish, I think it is. And in order to have color-coded cutting boards, you probably need to have poly cutting boards. It's much harder to safely color code uh, a wooden cutting board. Of course, there are other reasons why restaurants would generally favor plastic. Plastic you can throw into the dishwasher. Wood, you probably want to scrape clean in a sink. There are, of course, wooden cutting boards that you can put into the dishwasher, too. And in fact, you could put any wooden cutting board into the dishwasher. It probably just won't last as long, and that's a concern for restaurants, so they generally opt for plastic. Restaurants also worry about splinters coming up off of wooden cutting boards, and the customer chokes on it, ah, and that would be bad on Instagram, and it's a much more acute health risk to be concerned about compared to the, like, long-term hypothetical health risk of chronic microplastic exposure. Another thing to worry about is that uh, when you take a cutting board and you scrape it down in a sink like this, like you would generally do with a wooden cutting board, um, there have been like laboratory experiments that have shown that this action sprays a lot of bacteria onto the surrounding counter surface and up into the air. And uh, that could be a source of cross-contamination that's probably greater than if you were taking a plastic cutting board and then just dropping it directly into the dishwasher. Which cutting surface harbors more bacteria has been studied a few times directly, and most studies directly examining the bacteria on the surface of the cutting board show no meaningful difference between wood and plastic. Wood is generally more porous than plastic, and they've done experiments where they found that bacteria does tend to migrate deeper into the material here, but then again, it tends to stay there and doesn't work its way back up, and if it does stay there, it may be killed by some of the like natural antimicrobial resins uh, in pine in particular, that's been shown in one study. But really every literature review you're gonna turn up is gonna say the same basic thing, which is that there's no strong case to be made for wood or plastic vis-a-vis -vis germs, at least in a laboratory setting. Of course, what happens with germs on surfaces in a laboratory setting is very different from what happens with germs in actual kitchens among actual free-living human beings who may, in fact, cook and wash very differently with plastic versus wood, and there's all kinds of things we can't capture. Really, the only epidemiological study that I've been able to find is one from the 90s where they just found a correlation between um, plastic cutting boards and salmonella infections in California. People were actually, in the study, far more likely to have salmonella infections if they use plastic cutting boards than wooden cutting boards. But this was just like a, a pure correlation thing in a survey. We just don't know much from that. Like what kind of person, what kind of demographic was favoring plastic cutting boards in California in the 1990s compared to wood cutting boards? Might demographic factors explain this difference in salmonella outcomes? Now, of course, we can't all just sit on our hands and wait for overwhelming scientific evidence to tell us exactly what to do. We all have to make day-to-day -day choices in terms of our own individual health. and which kind of cutting board you choose to use, I'd respect either way. Another personal choice that I make in terms of my own health that's based upon research is uh, I do supplement a multivitamin, and a great one now is uh, Groon's, sponsor of this video. In fact, this is more than just a multivitamin. It's a multivitamin, it's uh, you know what they're calling a greens powder these days, and it's a probiotic all in one thing. And what is the thing? <laughs> it's a candy, well, a gummy. It's nut-free, gluten-free, anything that people have common sensitivities to, and it's not in here. 
here, and they told me that I could just eat it for the first time on camera. Like, they encouraged me to do that. They said, try it for the first time on camera. We're so confident you're going to like it. Yeah, it just tastes like a fruit snack. Like, it should be shaped like a little car or a cartoon character or something. Actually, I guess it is shaped like a bear. It's just green. Mm, that is good. And it is uh, thickened with pectin rather than gelatin, so it's vegan. Now, if you're somebody who has trouble swallowing big pills or choking down powders, this could be a really great option for you. You eat the whole package. That is your daily supplement. You know, there's just things in here that take up a lot of space. The fiber to be a prebiotic, and then also the, the mushrooms that are in here that are associated with good cognitive outcomes. Mm, there we go. It's got all of the basic vitamins that science says you need and will support, you know, healthy immune function, healthy skin, all that kind of stuff. And in reasonable amounts, um, some other products contain like gigantic doses of certain vitamins, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. This is, you know, very rational. The vitamins are methylated, which makes them more bioavailable, especially to 30% of the population with a particular genetic abnormality. And the uh, gummies themselves only have three grams added sugar. There is a sugar-free option as well. So whether you're mainly concerned about gut health or free radicals in your body, this is a really good science-backed daily all-in-one nutritional supplement that just is highly consumable, very eatable. Mm. Right now, you can get up to 45% off. Just click my link in the description. Up to 45% off your order with my link in the description. Thank you, Groons. So in terms of science, there is no strong case to be made for wood or plastic as far as germs are concerned. We don't even know if that whole like restaurant procedure of having different color-coded plastic cutting boards, we don't even know if that makes people healthier in aggregate. They're simply too hard of a thing to research. What we do know is that when you cut on any kind of cutting board, stuff comes off and ends up in your food and in your environment. This is the study out of uh, North Dakota State University from last year that I think is the cause of the present furor on plastic cutting boards and uh, microplastics. They actually found that wooden cutting boards release far more microparticles into the food, like three times as much. So if your problem is that you're grossed out by just non-edible stuff in your food, then maybe wood should be the one that you're worried about. But you probably shouldn't be worried about that, because wood is mostly just cellulose. Cellulose is just fiber. It's what your vegetables are made out of. There is actual reason to be worried about uh, plastic that you ingest. We know just about nothing from human studies, but from animal studies, uh, we do know that like aquatic animals in particular are really, really harmed by all of the microplastics that we are pouring into the environment, filter feeders, the physical effects, like they just choke on them or their, their digestive systems are abraded by the plastics, but also like kind of chemical, biological effects, oxidative stress, inflammatory responses, DNA damage, that kind of thing, but also en endocrine disruption, hormones getting messed up, reproduction getting messed up. But we do not know how how these levels of exposure these animals are experiencing compared to the levels of exposure that we are experiencing, and we don't know how our bodies process plastics versus how their bodies process plastics. We're very, very early in our understanding of this problem. So indeed, in this North Dakota study where they isolated the microplastics coming off of a cutting board where they were cutting carrots, uh, what they did is they did a little experiment to try to apply it to actual health. They took a, a mouse cell and they exposed it to the uh, microparticles that they had harvested from their cutting board, and what they found was uh, absolutely nothing. There was no meaningful result on the health of this cell. And indeed, one would assume that the health effects from ingesting plastic could be really minimal because the whole point of plastic is that it's relatively chemically inert. We are absolutely consuming it all the time, but we are also eliminating it all the time without event. Whether something else happens there in the interim, whether there's a gradual buildup of plastic in our bodies, we don't know. And what the long-term chronic health effects of that is, we don't know. But there is like no information to justify the freak out that is happening online just yet. Like I think it's probably the research about endocrine disruption that has caused this whole issue to be like vacuumed up into the aggrieved manosphere on the internet. Mostly young men who are upset that they have not achieved the kind of status in the economy or in life that they would like or in love. They're not able to have sex with the people they want to have sex with and they want to blame something external for that. And it's really easy to try to blame something that is both external and easily eliminated. Right? Like it would be easy to eliminate plastic cutting boards from your life, and therefore it's, that's a really attractive explanation for why you're not the kind of man you want to be. I mean, it couldn't possibly be that you sit on your butt all day staring into the misery machine and you don't go out and spend time with real people and you don't move your body and you eat way too many calories. I mean, it couldn't be that, right? So where I think we're at with the science is that it's kind of a similar situation to like Teflon pans. Yeah, the forever chemicals that they 
use in the manufacture of these pans are bad and they're bad for the environment, but like your use of a pan is probably just a teeny tiny little drop in the bucket of the problem. They're used in products all throughout your life that are totally ubiquitous. And even if you stop cooking in these, it's really not gonna affect your health or the environmental health of the planet very much at all. That's not a reason to you know avoid them. I mean, I actually do kind of avoid them. I, I minimize them. I only use nonstick when I absolutely need to. And indeed, I actually mostly favor wooden cutting boards at home nowadays. I just tend to use the plastic ones in videos because the wood ones tend to have gigantic logos burned into them, which is super annoying. Plus I have kind of a, I don't know, an attraction to this green guy that has been in my videos since video number one. You could say that I should be cutting on wood in my videos to model good behavior for my audience, and I'll take that under advisement, but gosh, here, look at this literature review that I've got linked in the description. This is very recent. It's out of Norway, has no shady sponsors, and it's all about all of the microplastics from all of the food and food-related products that are in your life. It is just so, so much bigger than cutting boards. Um, look at this Indian meal that Lauren and I got takeout the other day. Look at all of the plastic, and the plastic is getting hot and heated. Heat is a particularly bad thing for microplastic extraction. So should you favor wood cutting boards? All else being equal, yeah, I'd say maybe yeah, if for no other reason than to just kind of avoid buying yet another plastic product. If you have some particular reason to use the plastic, the case for the wood is just very, very weak, and I just think you should just go with whatever you have a particularly good reason to do. And also go with whatever is gonna get you actually cooking, like whether you cut the carrot on the wood versus the plastic probably matters a whole lot less than whether or not you eat the carrot. Kind of similar to like in the gym where people obsess over whether you're doing your bench press with your, your wrists like this or your wrists like this. Yeah, there's scientific cases to be made for either depending upon your goals, but like if it's gonna account for maybe 1% of your outcome, whereas the 99% of your outcome is gonna be determined by whether or not you got in the gym and did the bench press in the first place. Like just cook, just cook and eat healthy food and clean your stuff thoroughly when you're cutting you know, meat and stuff like that on it. Well, and all kinds of other things, it's not just meat. And what I would say most conclusively is don't have a social media freak out whenever you see somebody on the internet cooking on plastic. If they're in a restaurant, they all but have to cook on plastic and that is not their fault. Also, take a second and think about whether or not you're being rational. I get crap sometimes when I cook on this plastic. Nobody ever says anything when I cook on this wooden one in my videos, despite the fact that like, what kind of wood is this? Look at that wood grain. You ever seen a tree like that? This isn't wood, it's a wood composite. It's bound with plastic or resin, which is a kind of plastic. It's kind of like when people get on me for cooking with Nestle branded products in my videos. Nestle is legit, very uh, problematic company in a number of meaningful ways. But like, if you look at the center aisles of your grocery store, half the products, half the brands in there are owned by Nestle. So come on, what are we talking about here? Actually, we should talk more about that another day. We will.